Are you guys still hearing snoring sound from your bed partner at night? Have you ever wondered laying there awake at night? Could the snoring be from a medical condition? And if it is, can the medical condition have complications? Well, you're at the right place. Sleep apnea is one of the leading causes of snoring. And the snoring could be a sign of a deeper medical condition with serious complications. So today, I'm going to be talking about how sleep apnea is diagnosed, what is the treatment, and what are its complications. And you can have some serious complications from sleep apnea. So stay tuned until the end for those. Now, if you guys want to know what is sleep apnea, what are its signs and symptoms, what are its causes and its risk factors, I made a separate video on this that I will link above and in the description below for you guys to check out. If you guys haven't seen my first video about sleep apnea, let me just go over that sleep apnea can be divided into two different categories, obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, or central sleep apnea, or CSA. Now, how is sleep apnea diagnosed? Normally, it's done in a sleep lab with a sleep study. Now, usually, these tests are carried out in a sleep lab, but lately, uh, there have been kits available that they can do it at home as well, which is definitely more convenient for a lot of people. There's no fun sleeping in a foreign environment in a sleep lab somewhere. It's normally very hard to fall asleep there anyway. Nocturnal polysomnography is the test done in the sleep lab. For this test, you go to the sleep lab, you get hooked up to a lot of equipment which monitors your lungs, your heart rate, and your brain activity while you're sleeping. They also monitor your breathing patterns, your arm and leg movements, and your blood oxygen levels too. They monitor all your sleep stages to figure out if your sleep patterns are being disrupted by sleep apnea or not. Uh, like I said before, there are some home test kits available. Now, if you are a candidate for those, your physician will provide you with the kit. These kits will also monitor your heart rate, your blood oxygen level, and your breathing patterns as well. If your physician suspects you have CSA or central sleep apnea, then they will recommend you do a nocturnal polysomnography in the sleep lab. Or if your home sleep test is abnormal or inconsistent in any way, they will recommend you go to sleep lab as well. If you're found to have OSA or obstructive sleep apnea, you'll be referred to an ENT doctor, an ear, nose, and throat doctor to look for any obstruction in that area that's causing the sleep apnea. Now, if you have CSA, then you'll be referred to a neurologist to get further workup done for the cause of the CSA. Now, treatment of sleep apnea. I'm going to break this down into the types of sleep apnea. So for OSA, if you're having mild symptoms, lifestyle modification by itself may be enough. When I say lifestyle modification, I mean weight loss, regular exercise, uh, stopping smoking, avoiding alcohol, and maybe changing the position you're sleeping in, um, such as sleeping on your stomach than on your back. Now, if these modalities don't help, or if you have moderate to severe OSA, then there are other treatment options as well. One of those treatments is continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP for short. Now, if you have moderate to severe OSA, CPAP can be very beneficial for you. CPAP delivers air pressure via mask into your throat to keep the throat open and to stop from having the apnea episodes where you stop breathing and the snoring as well. CPAP is the most common and most reliable treatment for uh, OSA. But some people find it cumbersome and uncomfortable to have the straps and the mask on you while you're sleeping. Working with your physician, you can try different straps and different masks to see what is most comfortable for you. A lot of times changing the masks can help people feel comfortable. There's many different kinds of masks available for CPAP these days. Now, if you're uncomfortable with your CPAP, just don't stop using it. Contact your physician to make the changes necessary to help you feel comfortable with the CPAP machine on at night. Also, if you start snoring on the CPAP after some time, also talk to your physician again. Your CPAP may need adjustment to help make sure the airway stays open when you're sleeping at night. There are other airway pressure devices. If the CPAP feels uncomfortable because of the air blowing in your face, there are some CPAPs that automatically adjust the pressure as well, called auto CPAPs. Other devices like BiPAP are also available, which give more pressure during inhalation and less during exhalation. Now, if you're like, I've tried CPAP, I've tried the masks, I've tried the adjustment, the straps, it has not worked. It's just very uncomfortable and you can't tolerate it. There are other options. You can use oral appliances as well. Oral appliances are not as effective as CPAP, but it's better than not having anything at all. Now, the oral appliance is easier to use than the CPAP. So people that just cannot use a CPAP, they just cannot get comfortable with it, it's still better to use the oral appliance than to not use anything at all. All these oral appliances do is they make your lower jaw move forward, which helps open up the airway to make sure the airflow is not blocked. It relieves snoring and mild OSA symptoms. 
Now, you may have to try a few different oil appliances before you like the one that suits you the best. The last ditch option, nothing else worked, everything has failed, and you continue to have a lot of symptoms that's bothering your everyday life, last step is surgery. Normally, doctors recommend at least three months of trials with other devices and treatments before even considering surgery. There are many different types of uh, surgeries that can be done, such as tissue removal, tissue shrinkage, and job repositioning. What is the treatment of CSA? Now, treatment can be geared towards what's causing the CSA. And CSA can be caused by some cardiac or neuromuscular disorders. So gearing your treatment towards those can help CSA as well. Other therapies like oxygen, CPAP, and BiPAP can help as well. Your physician can also change your medications. A lot of times, opioid medication will dampen your breathing and will worsen CSA. So your physician may change those medications depending on how bad your CSA is. And you may also be given medications to help manage your breathing like acetazolamide. Lastly, something new for the treatment of CSA is adaptive seroventilation. It's a recently approved airflow device. It learns your breathing patterns. And as you sleep, it regulates your breathing patterns and prevents those pauses. It's usually reserved for people that have treatment emergent CSA, meaning for people that have serious CSA and need treatment right away. Now, if you guys are liking the content of this video and want to see more videos just like this, like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. It helps the channel grow. You know, in ancient times, snoring was a form of music. Okay, you caught me. I just made that up. Lastly, what we've all been waiting for, what are the complications of sleep apnea? Daytime fatigue. Now, waking up repeatedly because of sleep apnea, because you stop breathing, you don't get that deep restorative sleep. So you'll be more uh, tired, fatigued, and have decreased concentration during the day. Sleep deprived partners. Now, it can also ruin the sleep of your bed partner if your snoring is loud. It doesn't allow them to sleep and get restorative sleep as well. It may even lead to them going to a different room or a different part of the house as well. Diabetes mellitus type 2. Sleep apnea can lead to increased insulin resistance, which in turn leads to diabetes mellitus type 2. You can also develop metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and increased weight circumference. It can also eventually lead to heart disease. Complications with surgery. Now, people with OSA are more likely to have complications with major surgeries when they get anesthesia. Because they have OSA, when they get anesthesia, it relaxes the muscles in the back of their throat, which can make it hard for them to breathe. Liver problems. Yes, sleep apnea can also lead to liver problems. People with sleep apnea are more likely to have abnormal liver tests and in turn can lead to scarring of the liver, also called non-alcoholic fatty liver. Heart disease and high blood pressure. Sudden drop in your blood oxygen levels while you're sleeping can increase your blood pressure and put a strain on the cardiovascular system. It increases your risk of heart disease, stroke, as well as irregular heartbeat. If you already have heart disease, you have to be extra careful. If you have severe sleep apnea, these increased episodes of low blood oxygen levels can lead to a irregular heartbeat that can even lead to death. So that's how sleep apnea is diagnosed, the treatment, and the complications. Now, if you do have a bed partner that does snore, it's important to let them know because they themselves may not know. And once they know, they can get themselves checked out to make sure there's no serious medical condition causing their snoring. I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.